right, welcome to Don's Manufactory. Well, a uh, little update for this week. The first thing you'll notice is uh, Betsy's not masked and uh, certainly not painted. And it's a week after Memorial Day, and that was the goal. However, I don't have any paint. Uh, industrial Finishes said they would have my paint for me uh, this last week, but uh, they didn't. In fact, I heard the same words exactly. Uh, there's somebody in front of you, and it'll uh, it'll be next week. So in the meantime, I just uh, I haven't prepped the car yet. I got some other stuff done, but one thing that I did do: practiced painting to come up with a methodology. Sanded my test panel to get ready to shoot some practice runs. So I'll explain to you the takeaways and my method that I have come up with to paint the car. Of course, the car's not painted yet, so uh, it remains to be seen whether all this will actually work. My preferred gun, I think, for this time around is going to be my Cobalt. Uh, I did a real extensive look at and servicing of these paint guns. The... Cobalt has a lighter trigger pull, so it's not as fatiguing on my forearm, uh, which, you know, being an old guy. First thing is, after I found out that there was clear inside these lower holes, there was a drop of clear hardened inside of there. Uh, that's why this one, the, the fan was short and the pattern was a little weird. This is the fan size of the... What is it? Master Pro 44. You can see it's about, well, from just the, the smaller dots right there to the smaller dots, it's about 14 inches if you're counting the, uh, the dry part around the edge. If you're looking at just the wet part, it's 12 inches. And that was at a 6 inch distance from the paper. I put it right there and pulled the trigger. Okay, so... Uh, that's the Master Pro 44. This is the Cobalt. Same exact size. 14 inches from dry to dry, from wet to wet, 12 inches. The Cobalt, it has a more even pattern of paint. The Master Pro is a little more having wet spots, dry spots, you know, wet, wet, dry... This part here is wet. There's kind of a dry spot there. Then this part here is wet. So it's a little uneven. But the cobalt has this nice even pattern down through the center. So I get a better lay with this gun. Because every place it goes dry and wet, uh, you have a chance when you're trying to put on a, a say, medium wet coat, you know, the dry spots have to get wet but the, these wet spots are going to be modeled and uh, no thanks anyway this is the gun I painted the car with the first time this is the one I'm painting with this time okay so that's the first thing uh, the second thing is uh, I experimented with pressure and for this paint I need larger droplets so I'm using a 1.5 tip with the pressure down at 23 instead of up at 29 psi so what i'm ending up with is droplets where you can actually see the droplets it's not just a haze of of really well atomized paint you can actually see the droplet size there let me just uh measure one of these droplets here's a large droplet right here and it measures about that uh, almost a millimeter, 39 thousandths. And a small droplet out here is about, let me just pick one here, 15 thousandths in diameter. So that's what the gun is giving me at 23 PSI. For my particular paint, that's what I think is going to be required. The next thing I was doing was watching videos of how people deal with difficult metallic. Control coats, mist coats seems to be the general consensus, but how you apply them, uh, there is a wide variety. For my own particular situation, 
of wanting to use larger droplets. A guy in England, uh, I forget his name, but I'll put a link down in the description to his video. And I sort of adopted his methodology. I also talked to a friend of a friend who is a retired painter who's still painting all the time, uh, currently working on a uh, Pantera. He suggested doing a drop coat, mist coat, control coat, whatever you want to call it, uh, from a foot and a half away. I mean, if you think about that, a foot and a half, that's like 18 inches. So let me put my hand over here. There you go, that far away. That's, that's quite, quite a bit. So, uh, what I've ended up doing is, uh, I'm going to take his suggestion from, well, it's not going to be a foot and a half, but I'm going to say 14 inches. The guy in England, whose name still escapes me, what he was doing was painting a panel. Well, let me just show you on the car real quick. Let's just say this is the hood of the car, even though it's not. He's painting up this way and takes it up as far as he can reach and then immediately lifts the gun, comes back, does his control coat, staying about one fan width from where he left off. So that you can then walk over to the other side, excuse me, like this, start painting at the at about the 80% overlap or 90% overlap. Go ahead, paint the other half of the hood or the deck lid or whatever, then raise it up and do your control coat starting over where you left off with the control coat and do it panel by panel. His idea is that you're doing your control coat into your wet coat so that it melts right in. Don't let it dry. Uh, I was watching the uh, Eastwood video and their explanation was to go back and just do a mist coat. Just a real quick mist coat uh, over a dried base coat. And that didn't make as much sense to me, especially when I'm using larger droplets. I would end up with such a rough paint surface. But this guy from England, I just really like the idea that I'm going right back. I don't have to make any changes to anything other than the distance from my gun and then lay the control coat down. So uh, this was the method that I ended up trying uh, when I was painting my test panel. So uh, let's go out and take a look at the test panel. Now, when I was painting this panel, I painted this side, then drop coated this, then took my time walking around, and then finished painting from the other side and drop coated that. So it would be very much like going across the deck lid or the hood with the possibility of having dry spray in the middle or a problem with the metallic in the middle when I'm changing sides and shooting, continuing the shoot. Okay, now if we look at the metallic, let me just walk around here. You can see the metallic looks pretty good from all these different angles. See, you get the sun, different angles, and at no point do you see any strokes or any weirdness in the lay of the metallic. It's all really evenly distributed. I tested this with my meter. It's 200 microns. So there's EDP on here, then a coat of sealer, which was the uh, high build that's thinned out, and then I'm gonna leave my fingerprints on my, on my car, and then four coats of base 
and two coats of clear. So basically, um, yeah, it took four coats to get the coverage I needed. And that is doing, spraying the base coat in the normal way and then doing the drop coat on every coat. So technically you could say there's eight coats of base on this, but not really. Um, because this paint is so weird about how you can see through at different angles, you can see through to the primer underneath. I just felt like if I did a drop coat as I paint it each and every time that I'll end up with paint that has really good depth and there'll be no way that you can look through the paint anywhere and see through to the primer. And each coat on that panel looked smooth. When I'm all done, it's smooth, ready for the clear smooth. And then when I shoot the clear, it comes out smooth. Uh, I really like that method. So that's what I'm going to do. On Betsy here, after four coats of base, I could still see through to the primer. But on that panel, I can't. So that is all I have learned in terms of how I'm going to get this car painted. I hope it works. The other thing that painters on the internet keep saying is, you know, is as conditions change, you have to compensate. Uh, yeah, don't forget to compensate. And it's like, okay, so what is that? What does that mean? What am I doing? Well, the thing I was watching for, this was the methodology I was using. About a, I'm going to say 20%, maybe a little more than that movement each time or an 80% overlap is where I started. The idea is if I'm using an 80% overlap, let me just uh, get it set up here. Uh, okay, I have a 14 inch fan. So I'm starting right about here and psh, I'm painting. As I go over that spot, each time I'm moving 20% of the fan, and I'm going back and forth. By the time I've gone over, I'm getting away from where the fan isn't hitting this spot anymore. I've gone over it five times. So by then, it has to be wet. Uh, what's going to affect that? Well, the f slower I move my gun, the quicker it'll get wet. So let's say it's already wet by the time you get on, the, on your third pass over that single spot. Well, that's going to be too wet by the time you're over here. That's a really wet coat. What I want is for it to be just getting wet on my fourth pass, and then on my fifth cat pass, it's absolutely wet. So that every spot on the car gets five passes when I'm doing one coat. Okay, if the temperature starts to change, what do I do? I can move the gun in closer, because we're talking about how fast those droplets are drying. If I'm using a lower pressure in my gun, my droplets are bigger, they're going to take longer to dry, so they hit the panel wetter for any given distance. Okay, so pressure is one of the adjustments. The next one is how fast I'm moving the gun, so how much paint am I putting on by the time I get to my fifth pass so that I have a wet coat. If, if things are starting to flash off too fast, if I move the gun in, it's gonna, I'm going to have a smaller fan, but it's going to put on more paint faster, and so it's going to hit the panel wet. And we're only talking milliseconds difference. Moving the gun from here to here, is just a few milliseconds of dry time before it hits the panel. So as the temperature is going up, I'll need to slow my gun down or move in a little closer, whichever one you care to do, um, as you go. Here in Oregon, what I was dealing with when I was shooting that test panel, I started off the first base coat, first coat of base coat, went down at... Hey, what temperature was it? 64 degrees, I think. Yeah, 62, 64 degrees. That was 
my first coat. By the time I was putting my last coat of clear on, it was 80 degrees. So here in Oregon, that's what's happening. It's either warming up or cooling off the entire day. It spends a little bit of time at the same temperature, but not very much. So I'm having to compensate my spraying technique the whole time I'm painting. Because I start in the morning, it's 65 degrees. At 4 in the afternoon, it's going to be 90. Well, somewhere around 1 or 2 in the afternoon, it's going to be 80 degrees. So as I'm painting, and I have to get, leave my dry times in there, I want to make sure my base is completely dry before I start shooting clear, so i got to wait a half an hour for that. That's temperature swing. So when I come back to it, I need to be using a different reducer. I need to be uh, spraying with a different technique. Uh, for this test panel, I started out at 65 degrees. And if we look at any of my stuff, let's look at the clear. See my, my uh, activator for my clear? 60 to 75. So I started out at the beginning of my shooting, I was just over the minimum for this activator. But by the time I was finishing up my clear, I was five degrees over the max for this. Okay, my reducers. Well, the Omni reducer is just medium. And they don't really give you temperatures for what that is. It just says medium. I mean, I wish it would just say, give me the temperature range. That's a little more data to go on. But I do have um, this was 65 to 80 degrees. So this is, I would consider this to be, it says medium, so let's say 65 to 80 is what that other stuff is. Well, that means I started off below the minimum and right at the maximum by the time I was finished. So this really, because of those wild temperature swings, it can really drastically affect how the paint is going to lay. And I have to change while I'm painting. I have to be looking at the way the paint is hitting the car, adjusting my distance from the car, and the amount of overlap I do, and the speed with which I move the gun. So if I mix up one of these of either base or clear, that's I'm doing that for the anticipation of where I'm going to be. You know, by the time I get to clear, it's, it's, uh, what was it? It was like 73 degrees or so, 72, 73 degrees by the time I was mixing clear. Uh, at that point, I needed to use a really slow reducer. Of course, I don't have any, so I was stuck using the medium. But I made it work anyway. Uh, the clear isn't supposed to have, they don't say to mix in the reducer, but I knew from experience that putting the reducer in made my clear lay flatter. So maybe you could shoot the first coat of clear without any reducer and then put some reducer in. As it gets warmer, I can put reducer in and that'll slightly slow down and cause the clear to flow out more as I put subsequent coats on the car. And I can add that later. I can mix up my batch of clear with the activator and then I can just psh, put a little splash some uh, reducer in there and mix that up right before you know to compensate for the changing temperatures as I go. Anyway, that's what I have in my head. That's what I figure will kind of work. I think the test panel uh, proved that uh, I can get a really good paint job. So now it's just waiting for paint. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks for watching uh, Don's Manufactory, and I will get back to Betsy as soon as I get paint. Thanks. Catch you later.